What's up, guys? Um, welcome to another exciting hit scratching episode of Insane Disappearances. And I have here the information I need for something that I promised my viewers. Uh, it's a story about Kaylin Louder. I said her name wrong and said it Caitlin Louder. Uh, but you know, I made sure I got the name right this time. And I sometimes have a little problem with names because I noticed one thing about some of the uh, names in the cases of the first uh, David Pauletis book, which is the uh, Western U.S. Uh, book, you know, with the orange cover. Uh, a lot of the names have very hard to pronounce last names, you know. So, you know, me being human, you know, have a little problem pronouncing some of the names. I try to make sure I get them as correct as possible, but, you know, like I said, I'm only human, right? But anyway, <clears throat> this story here is about, of course, Kaylin Louder. And just to do a little preview before I start reading the information from the case, you know, she was a 30-year-old woman living in Murray, Utah. Um, she uh, was seen on a surveillance camera walking her dog at one point, and another point she was running from behind this big boulder that was in her uh, condo uh, parking lot and running to to the looking at the view of the uh, footage on the camera she was running to the left side of the camera um, and of course she made some uh, crazy calls to 911 and all that stuff <clears throat> and later on you know there was a you know the, the ending of the story isn't very good. But anyway, to start off, like I said, her name is Kaylin Louder. Uh, that's K-A-Y-E-L-Y-N. Uh, now, in January, on January 21st, 1984, twins Kaylin and Colton Louder were born. In 2006, Kaylin graduated from Utah State University to become a social worker. She struggles to find uh, that she, str she struggles to find a job that last that lasted between 2013 and two 2014. Uh, now there was no mention about the job she may have had before that. Um, now on November 17, 2009, Caitlin's twin brother pleads guilty to manslaughter and is sentenced to five years to life in prison for killing their uncle. His name was Jeffrey Ackerman. Uh, now, he was shot by Colton Louder uh, on February 27th, 2009. Um, both men were using drugs at the time. So, obviously, their mindset was erratic, of course. You know, when it comes to someone using drugs, they get a little erratic. they probably thinking one person took more drugs than what they were sharing and somehow... A gunfight uh, broke out, and apparently, uh, her twin brother Colton was the only one that had the weapon. Maybe they were arguing at first, and he pulls out a gun and shoots him dead. Uh, very sad ending for Jeffrey Ackerman, and he was brought to justice by arrest by um, her twin brother being arrested. <sighs> Crazy times. Okay, now on August. Um, on August of September 2014, <clears throat> Kaylin lost a job at a private boys' school. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, she may have lost a job um, because she was um, dog sitting for a uh, place called Rover.com. Now, back in the early days, like say the mid 70s, probably. It probably went back to maybe the 50s all the way up until like maybe the mid 80s, early 90s, or probably before the 90s, uh, where moonlighting was prohibited at all jobs, no matter what. So that could have been the reason why she got fired. She was moonlighting. But this was in 2014, so that couldn't have been what it was. Maybe it's because she was working at that job so much, she probably didn't have time to be on time at her previous job uh so that could have been what you know caused her to get fired 
Now, on uh, September 26, 2014, Kaylin calls 911 to report a fight at her condo's clubhouse. Now, at that clubhouse, there was a wedding uh, going on at the time. So, what she may have heard in her mind at that point is just what most of this is getting to at that, you know, at this, uh, you know, judging on the, 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 the words in the story. Um, she says she heard a fight going on. Now, I'm guessing that this fight that she may have heard was probably all of the people at this wedding having a good time, you know, and there may have been some loud uh, yells, maybe out of laughter, or probably people just, you know, having a lot of fun. You know, sometimes when you have a lot of fun, people, they talk loud, they laugh loud, or maybe something may have fallen at the um, at the wedding, maybe I don't know, but uh, she calls nine one one, saying that there was a fight that broke out. At she heard a fight broke out at the wedding. Uh, now uh, Kelly makes another phone phone call to nine one one, but she hung up before they could answer. I don't know, maybe at that time she was probably trying to get her word straight and probably lost the nerve to call nine one one. You know, when you, everybody knows that you call 911 for any other reason other than a, a, a distress call or an emergency. Nine times out of ten, it's a prank call. Uh, but this woman was 30 years old. I would think that someone her age wouldn't be calling 911 to place a prank call. Um, now, on, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. On September 27th, 2014, Kaylin makes yet another 911 call claiming her condo is being burglarized. Her roommate says behind her in the room, you know, she was in the room at the time when she was making this call, so she was probably next to her or behind her. She sang in the background that there was no one there in their condo and the doors were locked, so she couldn't understand what was going on. This is what she was saying to her over the phone in the background. Uh, Kaylin, <clears throat> at that point, is last seen on surveillance, uh, on a surveillance camera, uh, in the parking lot of her condo. Now, police later released more footage from the cameras. Uh, now, I was going to do, like, a, a, a video in front of my laptop, uh, to show you the video of her moving around in the parking lot, uh, from behind this huge boulder that was actually in the parking lot of her, uh, condo, and it, it was, there was, like, at least a total of six short videos of the surveillance, but it was, it was six short videos, surveillance videos, uh, that was given to, the, I guess, to the newsroom, uh, by the, uh, the condo in Utah, and it showed, you know, small videos of her, most of them were at least about eight minutes long at the, at the most. And most of the videos were of her walking behind this boulder. And then in one, in another section of the camera or in another video, you see her coming out from behind the boulder and she starts to lightly run, you know, towards the left side of the camera out of sight. And then there was another video of her walking out from behind this boulder again in from what I understood, there was is a um, a creek behind the boulder. Like there's a little area where there's a, a creek running in behind the um, the condo um, uh, complex. Uh, and she's walking her dog. At one point, she let she puts the dog down, and then there's a part of the video where you see her flail, not flailing her arms, but moving her arms around like as if she was talking to a dog. But she was facing the dog, and her head was down. So that means she was looking at her dog at the time now there's been a lot of i won't say backlash but there's been a lot of um talk about you know who she was talking to or the fact that people thought that maybe she was a little nuts because she was talking now there are a lot of people that talk to their, pet, to their pets a lot i don't have a pet i don't have a dog or any other kind of animal but i do i do know that a lot of people talk to their pets you know, whether it's a cat or a dog, you know. So, to me, in the footage, she really didn't look like she was talking to anyone other than her pet. Now, if she was, it could be uh, like this one story I heard about a person who 
runs his truck right into a tree. And when he gets out of the car, they saw him talking to someone. These people come up to this man who slams his truck into a tree. And I think it was an 18-wheeler truck, I believe. They come up to him and say, are you all right? They say, who are you talking to? And I, they, was, they were trying to figure out why he did that. Uh, and he says they told him to do it or they let it or something. Uh, so he was pointing at the tree. So that right there, who knows? That sounds like something that may have been happening to Kaylin. But by her dog being there, it looks to everyone who watched the video that she was talking to a dog. And like I said, a lot of people talk to their dogs, you know, because a lot of people treat their pets like their own children. If they probably couldn't have children or maybe they just, you know, who knows. You know, but well, these are what you call animal lovers. Now, um, at the t uh, after they show the footage, you know, there's pretty much, there wasn't too much about that story except for the ending. But uh, once again, you know, she is like 30 years old. She was about, at the time, she was five foot eight, 130 pounds with brown eyes and brown hair. Um, <clears throat> now, um, so now, now Kaylin's body was actually found two months later in the Jordan River under a bridge where her body was uh, badly decomposed. And she was found by the uh, West Valley City workers, uh, by some West Valley City workers um, at that point in time. Um, like I said, her body was badly decompo decomposed, so they really couldn't determine if she was a male or a female at that point. Uh, and uh, I'm guessing the only way they were able to determine who it was, was to, you know, examine her teeth. I have heard of that happening. There was a young man that worked at my job years ago when I was uh, a non-career employee. He was stomped to death by a group of guys only because the young, the, the young girl he was trying to talk to told them that he, uh, I think, raped her or something or he hit her or whatever the case may be and they all pretty much beat him to death point of the point of the story is that he was unrecognizable that is just how bad they beat him or stomped him to death and they said they could the only way they was able to, to identify him was to examine his teeth because that's dna right there so i would imagine that's what they did with kaylin kaylin's um remains um, they had to probably examine her teeth just to figure out what gender she was or who she was for that matter. Um, but like I said, she was found, I think they said she was found five miles away from where she was last seen, which was in the parking lot of a condo. Um, so if you were to look at a map and look at the, the distance from the creek, which was behind the condo and the distance from the condo to where she was found, which was in, the, like I said, the Jordan River. That's a pretty long ways. Now, how she was, not how she was to end up five miles away, two months later, I would imagine she obviously fell into the creek, or no, fell into the river near where she lived, and the current basically moved her from that point to the point where she was found. Now, looking at the, some of the photos of the river the type of water flow that was in that river i could see it being i can see it carrying her from point to point so now still how she was to end up in the war in the, in the first place now there has been there has been talk about how she like i said in the, in the early part of the video where she was trying to find work and she, uh, i think they said that she found a possible job I think that same day when she disappeared, but it fell through. So, and then there was the there's the stress of knowing that her brother com uh, committed a murder and was and killed their their uncle. So, losing a family member to another family member and then not finding a job is enough stress to probably maybe you know send you on, you know over the edge. Maybe I'm not sure, uh, but I don't know. Maybe. 
the fact that she couldn't find work was sending her through her breaking point, which is the reason why she was making all these strange, you know, unnecessary calls to 911 about stuff that wasn't even happening. You know, because when she made that last call, which was the third call, she was saying there was people in her condo and they were burglarizing her place and that she, they, they asked her uh, were there any weapons involved and she said that uh, I think she said yes and she, and she was like well uh, uh, they they asked her are they saying anything to you and she said they, was, they weren't talking they were just um, taking stuff so what that really meant and being able to look at the evidence of what was being said and I guess getting determining what she meant by all the, by all that I don't know, but um, other than that, that's pretty much it on her. There was really not that much information about it except for what I just read. Um, so you know, truly sad story. You know, like I said, two months later, her body was found five miles five miles away. Um, so now, does this story have any? Um, linkable criteria to the stories in David Pilatus' books. <clears throat> Maybe if you were to break down everything that's happened as far as what she did, you know, in her condo, the uh, surveillance footage, and what you could probably get from that, and the fact that she was found five miles away from, uh, you know, from where she was last seen. The fact that she was acting erratic over the phone <clears throat> sounding like she was nervous or paranoid or in distress <clears throat> that's one thing but the fact that she was talking loudly over the phone to the 911 caller doesn't really make any sense to me because if there were burglars in your home and you were you locked yourself in another room I would imagine this is me personally I would imagine you would actually be talking very low so they wouldn't hear you, you know, or hear where you are. They wouldn't hear where you were coming from. You know, they, I would imagine you would want to hide so that they could just take what they want to get and get out of the house. Okay, but she wasn't doing it. She was talking loudly over the phone. And so, obviously, they, I don't know if they picked that part up. I did when I heard her talking. So why would she be talking that loud knowing that there's people in her house taking her stuff, and she got locked herself in another room, I, like I said, me personally, from what I've seen, or from what I've heard on the news about people calling 911, and they're playing it over the TV, these people are talking very low, so they can't be heard by the burglars, they're probably under the bed, or in, locked themselves in a room somewhere, and just trying to stay as quiet as possible, while they can actually still hear them over the phone, so they can find a way to get to their establishment before they were to, I don't know, kidnapped, taken alive, or killed, who knows, but she was talking loudly, so that right there is a key point to let you know that obviously there wasn't anyone there, because I wouldn't be talking that loud for them to actually hear me, you know, there's good, there could be a possible reason for them to kill you, you know, if not anything else that would be worse, which I doubt anything other than them damn killing you would be any worse than that, um, so that's my interpretation on that situation, um, but like I said, there was really nothing, too much or nothing else on that on that story. Uh, like I said, I would show the videos and let you hear the voicemail, well, the the recording from the nine one one call. But like, um, the resolution of the phone and the resolution from the laptop, the brightness is so on the screen is so bright that it would cause it to create a glare around the entire screen. So if I was to show it on my camera phone. It wouldn't come out right. You probably wouldn't be able to see anything. You just hear the noise from coming from the, um, my laptop. Well, not noise, but hearing the recording or whatever. But you wouldn't be able to see the actual picture. So um, I would probably have to like later on once I start doing this even more. I will purchase a camcorder with a tripod that way I can do better videos from you know at a better vantage point. And because right now I got my phone sitting up against a book so that I can make a video of me not holding it in my hand because that's, that's how I was doing it before I was holding the camera up like this in front of me you know so I can 
post a, a video about you know the, the stories. So this is the best way for me to do it at this point until I can get me some better video, you know, technology. So, but yeah, that's it on that story. Um, the next story that I will be reading is going to be on two people. One person is not actually in the book. This is a story about a, a man, a father, as a matter of fact, who disappeared sometime this month. I believe on the third of this month. Um, his name is, I believe, Jeffrey Higgins, I believe. Um, I have to look that up again. But um, that's uh, his name, and he disappeared. I can't even remember the state right now. So, But yeah, like I said, the bottom line is that's going to be one of the stories uh, that I read. Like I said, it's not in the book, but it is a story that he talked about on Coast to Coast AM on the 13th of this month. Uh, and I want to thank one of my viewers about giving me the information. I'm not, not saying that I wasn't going to be looking for him to be on the show because I have the Coast to Coast AM app, which gives you all the information you need about up and coming shows. Um, now, I would advise anyone out there who is a coastie uh, to get this app. It's the Coast to Coast AM app, and it has postings of every single show that is going to be broadcast on his radio on George Nor George Norrie's radio show day by day okay it is a selection that says um, I guess it is a shows and it will tell you every show that is going to be come on coming on within that week or month you know and it even has information on past shows if you miss one so I listen to Coast to Coast AM every night except for maybe my days off you know because you know i normally would try to listen to it but it's more fun to listen to it while i'm at work you know it keeps me keeps my mind going while i'm at work you know but anyway uh and the next one is going to be on another man in uh in the book he's actually in the, the new the new book uh sobering coincidence his name is harsha um ooh, um Got to get that last word in, that last, his last name. Um, I almost said it. <laughs> Harsha, uh, his last name kind of reminds you of another, uh, one second. Take a look at this. Um, it's a unique name, but I've heard the name before. Um, right, okay, his name is Harsha Mad. Doula, like Madula album gotta. Um, that's gonna be the story that I'll read next, uh, along with the story about this man, Jeffrey Higgins. I'm not sure the first time I have to look at it again and uh, write some notes on him so that way I can post it on my next video. So, um, those are the next two. I might put them together depending on the, the, uh, the length of the story, or I'll post two videos. Either tonight, or along with this one, or tomorrow. I'm not sure. I just may still do that, you know, since I have the time to do it. So always, like I, like I always say in my videos, you know, just stay tuned, and I will post uh, the next two videos shortly. So just keep keep your ears open and keep your eyes on my page. But you know what to do. You know, hit me with a thumbs up and subscribe you know right here subscribe right here and um whoever watches the video i hope you like it as well as the others you know so anyone else that wants like i said wants to subscribe i want to welcome you to my page and if you are a huge fan of david politis and you're not that much of a reader and you don't want to pay the high cost in the shipping if you're outside of the u.s you can always come here i will read each story word for word and add my own commentary to the video to let you know what I think is really going on. Uh like I said most of the uh most of my theories get a little out there and creepy but it's like I've said in my past videos every single part of the evidence and the uh the details and the profile itself leads you to think that way. If you know anything about the unknown and the paranormal aliens or whatever you want whatever what have you that's what these stories do because they are weird the evidence is weird the criteria are weird the profile on the case itself is weird because it has all these weird abnormalities on how they disappear how they're found where they're found 
when they're found, you know, what isn't found, which should be found, that's the crazy part, what isn't found should be found, you know, so, yeah, like I said, it gets a little weird, but in any case, I know you'll love it, just like all my other viewers, and I want to thank you guys once again for subscribing to my page and watching my videos, I love you guys so much, I really do. And to you, Kimstar66, I looked up and down on my emails. I could not find that email you sent me about the um, the creatures that we talked about, you know, on my last post. Um, uh, I would say, darn, just try to send it again. I don't know, maybe you put uh, dot .com instead of .net, so I'm going to tell you. Uh, I don't have a problem saying my email on my page. Uh, it's M E C K D E E, all lowercase, at Comcast dot net, not dot com, but dot net. Just in case, because I know sometimes, you know, some people may automatically put dot com instead of dot net, or some people may have uh, other names that's affiliated with the, you know, with your name that is a, that's attached to your email address so hopefully you'll see this video and you'll post it again i have looked up and down the emails from the eighth which is what you did mention in my in your last comment uh but i couldn't find anything so um i but yeah, i would imagine if it's private it probably wouldn't show up on my page i don't know maybe you can look into that and see if you can i i don't know but um it would be nice if you can send me a photo. Now, if it doesn't work with that one, I do have another one. It's, it's L M K all lowercase L N K D L A at me dot com. Okay, so that first one doesn't work. You can send it to that one. I will put uh, more information in the comment section below. I mean, well, in the uh, description, and I will. Actually, I will probably make another comment to your comment on one of the videos you you made a comment on, and I will put that information on there. I'll you know send it to you that way, or like I said, if you watch this video, then you'll get the information from here. And like I said, for those of you that want to send me emails about what you may think these uh, is happening to all these people, like I said, you can comment below. Um, or send like I said, send me an email at those two emails that I just that I mentioned earlier. And uh, that's it. So, as always, I'm partying, like I said before. Aloha, mahalo, and ahui ho. All right, guys. Peace out. Be blessed. And stay safe. Love you.